the Nissan RB engine. Few engines have a more mythical presence than the Nissan RB inline six engines, being that they were never officially offered in the United States. The only way to experience them here were through magazine articles and VHS tapes of best motoring and hot version. The Nissan RB turbo engines are synonymous with the Skyline models, but also could be found in the Laurels, the Seferos, and the Australian legend, the Holden VL Commodore. The RB26 is single-handedly the reason why the Nissan Skyline GTRs are so highly regarded. Today on Explain, we will take a deep dive into the Nissan RB turbo engines and what makes it a cut above the rest. The Nissan RB series of engines are an evolution of the L series inline sixes, which were power plants of the 240Z and Datsun throughout the late 60s and early 80s. The first RB engines to hit the market were the RB20, even sharing the same bore and stroke of the L20, which that's where the similarities ended. The RB architecture was a leap in technology since it was offered with dual overhead camshaft, which you couldn't get on the L series, only the S20 and the Skyline 2000 GTR. Amongst all the variants of RB engines, I'm going to focus on the turbocharged variants denoted with the T. The first Nissans to use a turbocharged dual overhead cam RB engines were the 1985 R31 Skyline GTS and the luxurious GTSX. They specifically used the red top RB20 DET, which got its name from, you guessed it, the ribbed red valve cover. The compression was lowered from 10 down to 8.5 to 1 since it runs a ceramic wheel turbocharger at half a bar boost or 7 PSI boost. Also, most don't know that the red top intake camshafts are more aggressive with 248 degrees of duration versus 240 degrees in the non-turbo model and featured NICS or the Nissan variable intake system, which divided the 12 intake take ports into six for better low RPM performance. This gave the RB20 DET an output of 132 kilowatts or 177 horsepower, which was fairly decent for its size. By late 1987, the NICS induction system was dropped for a more free-flowing ECCS induction system and power bumped to 140 kilowatts or 188 horsepower. The red top RB20 DET would reach its zenith in the homologation special, the GTSR, which would allow the R31 into Group A touring car racing. This gave the RB20 DET the R designation and would include a less restrictive tubular exhaust manifold, a larger turbocharger, and a bigger front mount intercooler, and the engine could also be found in the ultra rare GTS Autech. By May of 1989, the R32 Skyline would debut with several versions of the RB Series Street 6 engine. The GTST, which was the successor to the prior R31 GTS, received an updated RB20 DET, which is known as the Silver Top. The cylinder head improved airflow with six large ports versus 12 smaller ones. Compression ratio still remained at 8.5 to 1. Also, the camshafts have the same lift, but the intake duration is slightly lower at 240 degrees versus 248. And the red top, which power still jumped to 100 58 kilowatts or 212 horsepower, which is the peak of the RB20 DET lineup. Three months after the R32 debut, the GTR nameplate would return from its 16 year hiatus. The R32 GTR was conceptualized with the FIA Group A rule book in the hands of the design team led by Naganori Ito. Group A rules put a 1.7 times multiplier on turbocharged engine displacements, which meant that they required a heavier minimum weight to level the playing field. Nismo made the decision to use a 2600cc RB architecture and put the car in the 4500cc class, which increased minimum weight and the four wheel drive Atessa ETS system weight wouldn't disadvantage the car. This led to the RB26 DETT. It differed from the RB20 as it was bored and stroked to 86 millimeters by 73.7 millimeters, keeping the 8.5 to one compression ratio. The valve train was upgraded from a hydraulic lash bucket to a solid bucket to allow much higher red lines of 8,200 RPM and the camshaft lift increase on both the intake and exhaust. The twin turbo designation indicated twin TE2701 ceramic exhaust wheel turbochargers with a two-piece cast manifold design and the turbochargers run in parallel. The induction system featured three sets of twin throttle bodies with a larger intake plenum, larger 440cc injectors, and the power was conservatively rated at 206 kilowatts or 276 horsepower due to the gentleman's agreement, which allowed no more than 276 advertised horsepower, and the RB26 DET was realistically putting down 225 kilowatts or 302 horsepower in independent testing.
In Group A trim, the R32s were absolutely dominating the Japanese Touring Car Championship, with the majority of these engines were built by Rennick, which was a subsidiary of Nissan at the time. These engines used the N1 engine block, which was believed to be more rigid than the 05U blocks found in the standard GTR. Beefier connecting rods and higher tensile strength rod bolts, the turbochargers dropped the ceramic turbines for steel and higher duration camshafts with larger 550cc injectors. The Rennick engines retained many factory parts, which were a testament to how overbuilt the RB26 DETT was from factory trim. The Godzilla nickname was bestowed on the R32 because of its track performance in the Bathurst 1000 in Australia and was a fitting name for this Japanese monster. By 1993, the RB20 DET was dropped as the R33 was introduced. As its replacement, the RB25 DET hit the market offered in the GTS 25T. This engine was a leap in technology as it introduced variable cam timing, which advanced camshaft timing relative to the sprocket on the intake camshaft, and it helped low RPM power and torque production. The RB25 maintained the same bore diameter as the 26, but with a slightly smaller stroke length of 71.7 versus 73.7 bump from 8.5 up to 9 to 1, giving the RB25 DET better off-boost performance, and the cylinder head has improved flow, but cam duration and lift stay relatively the same. These use a larger single T28 turbocharger with a ceramic turbine and alloy compressor wheel, which output was 250 horsepower, around 38 more than the RB20 DET. In the R33 GTR, the same RB26 DETT engine that the R32 was equipped with was used. Also, these RB26s have the revised crank oil pump drive with the wider engagement, which helps alleviate the issue of premature pump failure that affected the earlier RB26s before 1992. In 1995, Nismo along with Rennick would come together to build the RBX GT2. This engine was found in the Nismo 400R and was a RB26 that was bored over by one millimeter to an 87 millimeter bore and four more millimeters added to the stroke for a 2.8 liter displacement. Rennick would give this engine a forged rotating assembly, would hone out the intake ports, replace the graphite head gasket with a multi-layer steel gasket, and include the N1 spec turbos with steel turbines that now increase boost pressure from 0.6 bar up to 1.1 bar or 16 PSI boost. Output was 298 kilowatts or 400 horsepower, and the 400R was as close to race car you could get on the street. The wider fenders, the improved aero with lower suspension, and the signature LMGT1s made the 400R an instant classic. By 1996, the RB25 DET was modernized with the Series 2 engines, which combined the igniter and coil into a smart coil ignition system, and the compressor wheels on the turbo were nylon, which had less rotational mass and reduced turbo lag. In 1998, however, the R34 Skylines would be introduced and with a different goal in mind, the efficiency and emissions of the RB engines. This is where we see the introduction of the third generation RB25 DET known as the NEO engine on the non-GTR turbo models like the GTT. The NEO received a revised cylinder head with solid buckets like the RB26. The camshafts were revised with more lift than the Series 2, but slightly less cam duration for economy and cam phasing wasn't like an on and off switch, it was continuously variable. The turbine housing was also slightly bigger, but ran identical turbos. The internals, the wheel sizes, and the materials to the Series 2 were all the same. The NEOs also had the RB26 rods and compression ratio maintains the same at 9 to 1 for a 206 kilowatt output which matched the power of the R32 GTR surprisingly. <laughs> The R34 GTR's RB26 also received some changes with a more advanced camshaft grind for lower end torque. The turbo cores were ball bearing versus journal bearing in the R32s and R33s, but kept the ceramic turbines and the N1 spec engines maintained the steel turbines. The R34 also had more powerful processing ECU, which altogether gave the GTR the same advertised output, but with an increase in torque, and the independent testing is showing it closer to 240 kilowatts or 321 horsepower. <laughs> The crescendo of the RB26 is undoubtedly the Nismo Z-Tune, which was a spiritual successor to the Nismo 400R. The RB26 and the Z-Tune use a special triple R block, 
with a 87 millimeter bore and a 77.7 millimeter stroke, just like the Rennick RBX GT2. The GT500 crankshaft and connecting rods were used with custom forged pistons, more aggressive cam profile, twin IHI turbochargers, which were similar to the ones used in the 2004 Nürburgring 24 hour endurance race car. The cylinder head was hand ported, the intake manifold was hand ported, larger injectors, more cooling, all accommodated to 368 kilowatts or 493 horsepower. In all sense and purpose, it was a race engine and road legal trim, just like the RBX. Now, Japan didn't get all the fun either. Down under in Australia, they received the RB engine, but in the most unlikely candidate, the VL Commodore. Australia mandated all cars by January 1986 to have to run on unleaded 91 octane fuel, and the aging Black Street 6 would not be cost effective to adapt to stricter requirements. So Nissan and Holden partnered to supply RB30 engines to the Australian VL Commodore, and a absolute legend was born. The RB30 ET turbocharged engine had a 38 millimeter taller deck height than the RB25 and RB26 and consisted of lower compression pistons, a Garrett T3 turbocharger, 250cc injectors, a different intake manifold, and it was a single cam versus dual overhead cam in the RB25 and RB26. And this made 150 kilowatts or 201 horsepower. The RB30 ET would quickly overshadow the V8 in the Commodore models and would become the test bed for ridiculously fast drag builds. The RB series of engines is a masterpiece. The racing pedigree and dominance in the 90s was almost mythical, and the rarity, especially here in the States, make them much more appreciated than other attainable engines. While having its flaws, as all engines do, 38 years later, it's still used as a measuring stick for power, tunability, and strength. So long live the RB.